Okay, a lot of time or some weeks elapse from this event, this horrible um, rape uh, alongside the background of this baby being born and the final really truly uh, gut-wrenchingly harsh uh, scene. Um, there's the sound of water. That, that, that bathing that Blanche is always doing, that purification, that contrast is there from the start. There's another poker game. The atmosphere of the kitchen is now the same raw, lurid one of the disastrous poker night. So it, it's harsh that they're playing poker there. And of course, uh, it recalls that scene, but also it just makes us aware of this dense space, this small area where the, all these people have to coexist. And obviously after uh, Stanley's rape of uh, Blanche, um, the audience is left just imagining what, do, what ooh, how does life continue? The building is framed in the sky of turquoise. Stella has been crying as she arranges the flowery dresses in the open trunk. Eunice is there too. And there's, you know, from the poker table, there's just noises. Now remember, Stanley was losing in the last poker game. Um, he, he was getting, uh, his, his luck seemed to have been running out a little bit. And, and Blanche says the same about herself. But now, you know, drew an inside straight and made it, by God. I'm cursing your goddamn luck. You know what luck is? Luck is believing you're lucky. And then he talks about a bet that he made, too. I believed I was lucky. I put that down as a rule. Belief in self. That's what luck is. Mitch is not happy. You, 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 brag, brag, bull, bull. He's not, he can't even complete his sentences. He's just so angry, confused. Something's happened in between. I mean, maybe he's heard the rumor of what Blanche is saying. Uh, Stanley's done. Maybe he resents what Stanley's done, how he's treated this weak and vulnerable woman, Blanche. Um, you know, there must be a resonance with him, uh, with the girl that died, with his mother, all these weak and vulnerable women. Stella's folding the dress. What's the matter with him? Eunice. I always did say men are callous, but they have no feelings. Making pigs of themselves. Like, she's, she's just not happy with them playing this poker game. But again... You know, men, no feelings. What's the matter with her? What's the matter with him? What's the matter with her? How's my baby sleeping like a little angel? Brought you some grapes. She puts them on a stool and lowers her voice. Blanche? Bailey. How is she? She wouldn't eat anything but ask for a drink. What'd you tell her? I, I just told her that we made arrangements for her to rest in the country. She got it mixed in her mind with Shep Hutley. Her fantasies mixed, I think is the key word there. And there's, you know, this indirect speech. What are they going to do to her? What, what are they going to do? Well, you'll see in a second. Stella, if anyone calls while I'm bathing, take the number and tell them I'll call them back. She's, st I mean, where, where does she think she is? Where she's, She's confused. Uh, and she, look at the poetry, really the gorgeous poetry and description of clothing and what she'll wear. That cool yellow silk, silk the boucle. See if it's crushed. If it's not too crushed, I'll wear it. And the lapel, that silver and turquoise but in the shape of a seahorse. You'll find them in the heart-shaped box I keep my accessories in. And Stella, try and locate a bunch of artificial violets in that box too to pin with the seahorse on the lapel of the jacket. I mean, I just think it's so beautiful and tragic and speaks of her old life, her accessories, her attention to detail, her ability to describe, her upbringing, her, her calling for service. Uh, it's, 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 it's amazing. 
and it's the first thing we've heard from her after this rape and it's 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 devastating to me as an audience member as a reader reading it now I'm devastated Stella's regret I don't know if I did the right thing what else could you do I couldn't believe her story and go on living with Stanley you know she couldn't do both don't ever believe it Eunice's life has to go on no matter what happens you've got to keep going couldn't believe you know the language here is interesting i can't both live with him and believe it it doesn't mean i don't believe it i i can't i couldn't i ref you know there's a dissonance there and she eunice almost forces her back into the lot yes don't you can't you just gotta keep going i mean here here is the tragedy of women, I think. Here is this reality, both the financial and social reality that these women are in. Is the coast clear? Yes, Blanche. Tell her how well she's looking, you know, that vanity. Please close the curtains before I come out. You, I guess it's been like this for weeks, her playing this game and Stella having to Balance between the baby, Blanche, and Stanley. Stanley having to be in the house with this, with the woman he's raped. I mean, it's, it's horrific. Close the curtains before I come out. They're closed. How many for you? Two, three. The plan. Poker. She has a tragic radiance in her red satin robe following the sculptural lines of her body I mean again that light the drawing how much he's telling you how he wants to see from his play the stage directions are magnificent like paintings here comes the music the Vesuviana again that expressionist sense that we the audience are in Blanche's mind she's 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 just getting you know it's indicating a level of madness, her hysterical vivacity. <gasps> I've just washed my hair. I'm not sure about the soap out. Well, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, it's a problem. Did I get a call? Who from? Shep. She's just so twitchy. At the sound of Blanche's voice, Mitch's arms supporting his cards has sagged and his gaze. I mean, here we have guilt, regret. Loss, pain. I mean, he's a this play doesn't just destroy Blanche. It destroys him, too. Hey, Mitch, come to. Wake up. Snap out of it. Santa's new voice, on the other hand, when he, when hearing Stanley's voice, shocks Blanche. Shocked gesture, forming his name with his, her lips. Stella nods and looks quickly away. Does she know? She's guilty. She feels something. Blanche stands quite still for some moments, the silver-backed mirror in her hand and a look of sorrowful perplexity, as though all human experience shows on her face. I mean, what is that? It's poetry. What are the instructions for the actor? We do, I mean, it's so complicated. She speaks with sudden hysteria. What's going on here? What's up? She turns from Stella to Eunice and back to Stella. Her rising voice penetrates the concentration of the game. Mitch ducks his head lower, but Stanley shoves back his chair as if about to rise. Steve places a restraining hand on his arm. You know, don't make a mess. What's happened here? I want an explanation. Hush, hush. Please, Blanche. Why are you looking at me like this? Is something wrong? You, you look wonderful. Yeah, you're... You're going on vacation. I'm green with envy. Help me get dressed. What a pretty blue jacket. They're, you know, they're flattering her, distracting her. Um, this is, it's, it's blue. It's lilac. No, it's Della Rabia blue. The blue in the old Madonna pictures. So, Blanche is reminding you, and Williams is reminding you 
of the Madonna, of the Virgin Mother Mary in, in Renaissance paintings. In vis the visual cue we could get on stage is of, I mean, she is Virgo, but she is no virgin, but she is uh, a victim. Um, a victim of something. And in that sense, that sense of suffering, that sense of holiness through suffering, I think is something that Williams wants us to think with this character. Um, are the grapes washed? Yeah, washed, washed, yeah. Um, those cathedral bells. Now we move into the bells themselves. Her poetry, they're the only clean thing in the quarter. I'm ready to go. Oh, wait, she's going to walk out before they're here. Oh, who? Who's coming? We don't know. She turns weakly. She lets them push her into a chair. A monologue from Blanche. I can smell the sea air. The rest of my time I'm going to spend on the sea. When I die, I'm going to die on the sea. You know what else die of? Melody, you know, she's a dramatic and poetic. I'm going to dry of eating an unwashed grape. I will die with my hand of some nice-looking ship's doctor. A very young one, a small blonde mustache, and a big silver watch. Poor lady, the queen undid did her good. That unwashed grape has transported her soul to heaven. She's being silly and trite. But she's being funny and poetic. All the things we love in Blanche. And tragic is behind it too because of what's about to happen to her. I'll be buried at sea sewn up in a clear white sack and dropped overboard at noon in the blaze of summer and into an ocean as blue as my first lover's eyes. Her death, she prefigures her death, her loneliness, her desire, her fantasy. So there's a doctor and a nurse, a matron who have appeared. The gravity of their profession is exaggerated so they're they're almost overdoing it to really show so these are people from a mental institution and they're here to take Blanche away um so they they ring the doorbell it's for me then and now her, she's terrified the Varsuvian is cranking up is this the gentleman I was expecting from Dallas uh yeah I think so uh I She's freaking out, okay? She doesn't really accept it. My silver toilet articles are still out. Ah, they're waiting in front of the house. They? Who's they? She is a good reader, remember. She gets it. Almost, almost like a paranoid person's a good reader. Um, I cannot imagine who this lady could be. Who is this people? Possibly she's... Now she's figuring it out. It's not right. How do I look? Lovely, lovely. And she walks in. And as before, she says, please don't get up. She crosses quickly out to outside door. The poker players stand awkwardly. All except Mitch. So this is a grave and solemn moment. Uh, Blanche steps out on the small porch. She stops short and catches her breath. How do you do? And she realizes this is not Shep Huntley, and she's going to get really upset. The Varsuviana cranks up. There's a moment of silence. Stanley just shuffling his cards. This is the end of his game. He just wants it over. Blanche catches her breath, slips back into the flat, enters the flat with a peculiar smile. She, she's, she's terrified. She's very frightened. Eunice tries to hug her. Everyone always tries to hug or touch Blanche. She stops just inside the door. Mitch keeps staring down at his hands. So guilty. But the other men look at her curiously. She's like, she's a strange oddity, isn't she? A crazy woman. Like, you know, a zoo animal or something. At last, she starts around the table towards the bedroom. As she does, Stanley suddenly pushes back his chair and rises to block her way. You know, final shots from Stanley. Did you forget something? Yes, I forgot something. She rushes past in the bedroom. 
lurid reflections appear on the walls of odd sinuous shapes. So that's from the rape, the jungle animals, these horrible projections from her mind. The sounds of the Vasuniana, cries and noise of the jungle. It's all just ripping through her. Now, often, as with the radio production, or, or even, I'd say to some extent, Kazan's production, this play has a tendency to be presented as a realist play. But notice, when you read it, Williams wanted it to be an expressionistic play. He wants the audience to be disrupted and confused and part of Blanche's consciousness. Doc, you better go in. Nurse, bring her out. So now they're trying to get her, coax her. She says she forgot something. Um, they're all whispering. What did you forget, Blanche? We can pick it up later. Sure, we can send along with the trunk. He's kicking her in. I don't know you. I don't know you. I, I want to be left alone. Please. Echoes of the rape. You left nothing here but spilt talcum, old empty perfume bottles, unless it's this paper lantern you want to take with you. You want the lantern? He crosses, seizes the lantern, tearing it, just like Mitch. Tearing the lantern. Just ripping it off. She's probably replaced it. And he takes it on that last rip, that last brutal act of violence he pulls on her. The matron steps boldly towards her. She screams and tries to break past the matron. All the men spring to their feet. Stella runs out to the porch with Eunice following to comfort her. Simultaneously with the confused voices of the men in the kitchen, Stella rushes Oh my God, Eunice, help me. Don't let them do that to her. Don't let them hurt her. Oh God, oh God, please don't hurt her. What are they doing to her? What are they doing? She's just, I mean, this is just brutal. But you know, it be, is Stella passive? Is Stella complicit? I, I don't know. It's something we have to think about though. It's something we've got to analyze. Is she complicit or is she actually just made a mistake? Or is she doing like Eunice says, is she just has to keep going? And this is her only choice. Stella is a complicated character, I would, I would say. No, stay here. Don't go in there. Eunice wants to protect her from what have I done to my sister? What have I done to my sister? Eunice, you've done the right thing. The only thing. She couldn't stay here. There was no other place. I mean... In a way, Eunice is answering my question. What? Why? Maybe the tragic is it has to be the only choice. Stella and Eunice are speaking on the porch. Hey, doctor, doctor, you better go in. Oh, the doctor doesn't want to do it like this. Um, this is a bad thing, Pablo says. There's no way to do it. She should have been told, Steve says. You can't just spring that on someone, Pablo. Mitch has started towards the bedroom. He Stanley blocks him. Here you get Stanley almost reminding me of war, protecting his friend, protecting him. Or is he? Is it just more punishment? You, you done this. All your goddamn interfering with things. It's very ironic that use of interference because it links back to the rape scene. So it it harkens. It echoes that. Does he know? He's wild with anger. Couldn't he have just let the illusion be? Which could have been with her. Quit the blubber. I'll kill you. He goes further. Lunges. Strikes. Hold this boneheaded crybaby. I mean, again, it could remind us of the war. It could remind us of his anguish. Uh, so much is happening here now. Mitch collapses, crying. I mean... Mitch just crying. Um, Matron's holding Blanche back. Blanche starts wildly scratching. Defend and she's the animal now. These fingernails have to be trimmed. Do we need a jacket? A straight jacket. It's a way to bind your arms. So uh, you can't harm anyone, so you can go to um, the 
Uh, so you can go to the insane asylum easily. Uh, not unless necessary. He takes off his hat and now becomes personalized. The inhuman quality goes. His voice is gentle and reassuring as he crosses to Blanche and crutches in front of her. As he speaks her name, her terror subsides a little. The lurid reflections fade from the walls. The inhuman cries and noise die out, and her own hoarse cry is calmed. The doctor, I mean, so she's she's just... He He's trying to make a connection with her. He's obviously a caring person. He, he wants to not just force her. Miss Dubois, so formal... And it won't be necessary. Ask her to let go of me. Let go. It, now we have the southern manners, you know, all this business. The matron releases her. Blanche extends her hands towards the doctor. He draws her up gently and supports her with his arm and leads her through the portieres. Whoever you are, I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. That's the most famous line after Stella in the play. Enigmatic though, what is he? What's what's being said? I don't know who you are, um, but whoever you are, I need kindness, and it's the kindness of strangers. And this is southern hospitality. It accentuates Blanche, who she is, her tragedy all the more. The poker players stand back. Blanche and the doctor cross the kitchen, the front door. She allows him to re lead her as if she were blind, so she can't see. She's being guided. She surrenders. She surrenders. Now it's Stella calling out the name. Blanche, Blanche, Blanche. She walks without turning. They go around the corner. Eunice descends to Stella and places her child in her arms. It is wrapped in a pale blue blanket. Does that mean it's a boy? Could it be a girl? Could be, by the way. How would that be different? Why doesn't Williams tell us definitively the name, the gender? Why? Why leave that open? Why indeed? Eunice continues downstairs and enters the kitchen where the men, except for Stanley, are returning silently to their places about the table. Stanley has gone down the porch and stands at the foot of the steps, looking at Stella. Stella? She sobs with inhuman abandon. Gone. There's something luxurious in her complete surrender. She also surrenders. And how creepy and odd and open and strange the ending is. Voluptuously, soothingly. Now, honey, now, love, now. Now, love. Now, now, love, now, love. The, the meaning, the comfort turns into almost a order. He kneels beside her and his fingers find the opening of her blouse. He makes sexual advances to his weeping wife whose sister is off to the lunatic asylum. Luxurious sobbing, sensual murmur, fade away, while the blue piano continues, and Steve starts another game of poker. So we have this incredibly abstract, ambiguous, hor in many ways could potentially be horrific ending to the play, where more uh, where Stan's inevitable constant sexual drive uh, could lead to more tragedy. We just don't know. And I think about that child, if that child was a girl. And I worry, at least in my imagination, about how she will grow up and how Stanley may interfere with her. And if it's a boy, I wonder, will they grow up to be another Stanley?